Anytime you look at a professionally done circuit board, one of the things you notice right away is how clean they are. I mean, I mean, look at that. Look how shiny those joints are and how shiny and clean that is. Oh, wait a minute. This is one of mine. So here's everything you're going to need to do this. Of course, you have your circuit board and you're going to need a glass container or ceramic to hold the cleaning solution. You don't want to use plastic because plastic is going to be etched by the cleaner so because it's it's caustic and the caustic solution will etch plastic. And you don't want plastic in your solution. You want your solution to be as concentrated as possible. And then we have our degreaser. You don't have to use this particular brand. I don't even think they make this anymore, but most any degreaser that contains this, uh, let's see, butoxyethanol. And then you're gonna need some distilled water to dilute your degreaser solution. So you want to pour in your degreaser, you want to mix this in maybe anywhere between a 10 and 50 percent solution. If you're doing this in a uh, ultrasonic cleaner, then use a little less, close to the 10 percent. If you're doing this the way I'm about to do it, then go 50-50 and then pour in your distilled water. For the remainder, now you're going to need a way to heat this water up. I'm going to do it in the microwave. You can also use a, a cooktop or something. Uh, you can use a, a pan. Metal pans work too. Metal containers work, as, especially if it's stainless steel. You don't want to use regular steel because it'll etch the steel, and then you got steel in your solution that you don't want. And you especially don't want to use zinc coated steel, plated steel, because that zinc will come off and you don't, really don't want that in there. But you can also do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to heat this up in the microwave. So take this, this solution now and stick it in the microwave for a, a minute or uh, 45 seconds to a minute, long enough to get it almost to boiling. If you have a thermometer, you want to get it to about 65 to 70 Celsius. I'm not sure what that is Fahrenheit because all the instructions I, I've seen are in Celsius. And it, it, it doesn't really matter as long as it's, it's around like, I think it'd be around 160 Fahrenheit. I think. Yeah. But you don't want to do it. You don't want to put the circuit board in here while it's boiling, because that will make the etching too strong, and it'll actually etch your solder on here. It's going to etch the solder a little bit. That's why you want to do this in a container that you don't care about, that you're not going to eat out of, because it's going to have some lead in it if you're using lead-based solder. And you probably it might. You might be able to see that because I've washed this board already once and the joints are just kind of a little bit dull. These ones up here on the on the bottom toward the bottom of the screen here. It does etch the solder a little bit, just a tiny bit. It'll still be nice and shiny, just not that mirror finish that you started out with. Another thing you want to you want to consider is you don't want to use any unsealed switches like this one anything like that you don't want it on the board when you're when you're dip cleaning it like this because the solution will get inside that switch where you don't want it and it can have uh, it can uh, etch the switch contacts and make the switch have intermittent contact sealed switches are fine Make sure you know what kind of switch you have. 
before you do this you should already know if you're buying it new but like this type of switch the most common these these ones here are are not sealed you don't want those on the board what you have to do is clean your board first and then just use a tiny little bit of no clean flux when you solder that in and then do that last okay before I forget there's one more thing you're going to need and that is a toothbrush or some kind of brush to agitate your board to help remove that heavy duty uh, you know where it got hot and it uh, dissolved a lot of uh, oxides there and it, and it gets really hard and stuff you're gonna need this uh, to scrub it the the best thing to use is a boar's hair brush but you can't always find those toothbrushes will wear out rather quickly actually because of the plastic bristles and this stuff will uh, get in there and, and etch that plastic on there Okay, now this is hot. Now be careful when it comes out. Don't burn yourself. And you want to, if it boils, you want to wait a minute or two, and um, be careful, especially be careful not to get this on your hands when it's hot, because it will eat your skin. Okay. Now what you do, just dip it in, and leave it sit for a minute. You can kind of agitate it move it around a little bit like that Let, leave it sit for a couple of seconds or so and you can see it's already starting to remove that residue you can see that scum starting to form on the surface there that's the crud coming off the circuit board okay and you want to scrub it a little bit with the toothbrush or whatever your brush is that you have. Don't use a wire brush, of course, because that's going to scratch your circuit board and you don't want that. Just a gentle brush. Get both sides, especially if it's a double-sided board. Wherever there's really cruddy stuff, you want to scrub that real good. And then dip it, put it back in, dip it in again, leave it sit some more. Do it a couple of times until you think you've gotten everything. Okay. And then once you've gotten everything, take your distilled water and go to the sink and rinse the board with your distilled water. If you have some rubbing alcohol, like in a spray bottle, you can use that. That'll make it dry quicker. This is 50%. A lot of guys they recommend 100% or 99% as close to 100 as you can get. You can't get 100% alcohol because alcohol does not come in 100% because they can't get all the water out of alcohol. Alcohol will absorb water right out of the air. So once you're all done, you should have a nice clean circuit board. I hope that helps someone out there. If you found this helpful, please go and visit my Patreon. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching, and I shall see you in the next video.